Are you ready for a new adventure? Time to travel back in time. Let's go. Are you ready for a new adventure? Let's learn about the past with Anna and Leo. Hi, friends. Welcome to Unlock This, a podcast from Honest History, where we join our friends Anna, Will, and Pussy on adventures through time and uncover some really cool stories along the way. My name is William. I'm six years old, and I love learning about history, especially new stories that I don't hear about in school. I can't wait for today's story, and I think you're going to love it too. So let's dive in. Anna, the museum has a new exhibit this month. It's all about musical instruments. Really? I wonder what kind of instruments. I think the exhibit is in this room over here. Let's go look. See? Here it is. Whoa. There are a lot of instruments in here. Check this one out. The label says it's a banjo. And there's a button you can press to hear what it sounds like. Here, let me see if it works. So that's what a banjo sounds like. Anna, look at this instrument over here. I think it's some kind of flute. The label says it's called a Diza and it was invented in China. Press the button, Leo. I like the sound of that one a lot. There are so many instruments in here that I've never seen before. But there's one I do recognize. Over there, do you see it? It's a piano. You're right. My cousin started taking piano lessons, and he taught me a song. Do you want to hear it? Please, don't touch the instruments. Oops. Sorry. I guess the security guard doesn't want us to play this piano. But there's a button, so... We can at least hear what it sounds like. The label says this piano is from the 1800s, so it's over 200 years old. Apparently, it was built in Austria by the Stryker Company. Hmm, I guess that must be a company that built pianos back then. Oh, hello, Percy. You found us. We were just reading about this piano. Really? Percy said a woman named Nanette Stryker owned the Stryker Piano Factory. She knew Mozart and built pianos for Beethoven. Wait, I've heard the names Mozart and Beethoven before. Those are famous composers. I think I know one of their songs. It goes, dun 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 dun, dun 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 dun, right? <laughs> I'm not sure, but look. There's some other buttons near the piano that we can press. And this one says it's one of Beethoven's songs. It's called Symphony Number no. 5. Let's hear what it sounds like. That's it! That's the song! See? I told you I knew it. So Nanette built pianos for the man that wrote that famous song? I've never really thought about building pianos before. I wonder how hard it is. Come over to this side of the piano. The lid is up so you can see inside and look at all those different pieces. That looks complicated. Do you see all those tiny hammers and strings? Nanette must have been really good at her job. You know, I'd like to learn more about building pianos and Nanette Stryker. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Anna? Yes, let's go to the vault. Percy, can you find us something about Nanette Stryker? I wonder what Percy has in mind. I think he wants to show us something in this drawer. Here, I'll open it. What do you see, Anna? I'm not sure. It looks like some type of tool. Here, you have a look. Interesting. I wonder what it's for. 
There's a bunch of old pictures in here too. This one has pianos on it. Maybe this is the one Percy wants us to look at. Oh yeah, that picture looks like a drawing of a big fancy room. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pianos sitting in the room. That's a lot of pianos in one place. I wonder what the room was for. Anna, do you feel that? Yep, it feels like we're about to travel. Here we go! Anna, are you there? I think we've arrived. I'm here, Leo. We must be inside a house. But I wonder where this house is. Maybe we should look out the window. Good idea. Let me pull back this curtain so we can see what's outside. Well, I see a lot of buildings. And there's carriages and horses on the street below. Oh, wow. And look what people are wearing. They're dressed very differently from us. I mean, check out that lady's hair. It's huge. Hey, Anna, I just noticed that there's a piano in this room. Do you want to hear the song I can play? Yes, let's hear it, Leo. Okay, listen to this. Leo, someone just came into the room. Nanetta, is you here? I'm in the other room, Faza. What is it? Oh, I thought I heard the piano playing in here. Never mind. Good thing they can't see us, but we should probably stay away from the piano. He said Nanette, and she called him father. Do you think Nanette Stryker is in the other room and that's her dad standing there? That's what I was thinking, too. Oh, wait, Leo, look! That girl just walked into the room. Nanette, there you are. You must pray for our friend when he arrives in just a moment. That little girl is Nanette. She looks about our age. And another man just walked into the room. Check out his hair. It kind of looks like George Washington's hair. You know, with the curls on the side and the ponytail on the back. Percy said that hairstyle was very fashionable in the late 1700s. Men would also put white powder in their hair, and sometimes they wore wigs. Apparently, a powdered wig was a sign of wealth. Really? Hmm. So we must have traveled back to the late 1700s because that man's hair definitely looks like a white wig. Nanette, this is Herr Mozart. He has come to see our pianos. Would you like to play something for him? Of course, Father. Whoa, that man in the wig is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You know, the famous composer? And he's listening to Nanette play the piano. She sounds way better than I do, but Mozart doesn't look happy. Percy said Nanette was just eight years old when she played for Mozart. The composer didn't like the way that she played, but he saw that she had talent, and she could learn every song by heart. Well, she is only eight years old. I think she sounds pretty good. Hey, Leo, check out this room over here. I think it's some kind of workshop. Yeah, look at all those pieces of wood. They're definitely building something in here. This piece looks like a part of a piano. Do you think this is a piano workshop? Well, you did say Nanette built pianos, right? So maybe it all started here. You're right, Leo. Percy said this is her father's workshop. Her father's name was Johann Andreas Stein. He started building pianos in his workshop, which was on the ground floor of their family home. He was very good at his job, and he taught his children how to build pianos too. So this is where Nanette learned to build pianos. And I think I just figured something else out. What is it? Look what I found. It's the tool we saw in the vault. Nanette and her father must have used it to build pianos. You must be right, Anna, because it feels like we're about to travel again. Hold tight! Hi, friends. Are you enjoying today's episode? 
I'd like to take a quick break from the story to tell you about another great place to learn about the past. Honest History creates magazines and books for kids that are filled with fun stories and activities that bring history to life. From pirates to spies to great inventions and so much more, you'll learn about interesting people, places, and events from around the world that made history. Created for kids ages 6 through 12, you can sign up and receive new adventures delivered straight to your doorstep every quarter. Just visit honesthistory.co. That's honesthistory.co to sign up today. Oh, and here's a special offer for our podcast listeners. Use code UNLOCKTHIS for 10% off. Again, that special code is UNLOCKTHIS. Okay, let's get back to the story. Leo, I think we traveled somewhere else. It's some kind of big room. Hold on, do you hear that? Yes, someone is playing the piano and they're really good. Look over there. A woman is playing the piano. I think it's Nanette, but she's all grown up. And there's a man standing next to her. He's holding some kind of trumpet up to his ear. I wonder who that is. Wait a second, Leo. I think that man is Ludwig van Beethoven, the famous composer. There's a picture of Beethoven hanging in my classroom, and that man looks exactly like that picture. Beethoven. That's the composer who wrote the song that goes, dun 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 right? <laughs> yes. I learned about Beethoven in school. Do you know that he started to lose his hearing when he was 28 years old? That trumpet he's holding? It must be a hearing device. Oh, I see. So when he holds the trumpet up to his ear, sounds become louder. Exactly. I wonder what Beethoven is doing here. Do you think he was friends with Nanette? Well, according to Percy, they were very good friends. Beethoven would encourage Nanette to expand her business, telling her that the whole world should know how amazing her pianos were. And Nanette often helped Beethoven when he got into trouble. One time, the famous composer was thrown out of his lodgings because he kept pounding on his piano in the middle of the night and it was waking up all the neighbors. Nanette found Beethoven a new place to live, and she would even come to his home to help tidy up the place. That is a good friend. Yeah, because Percy said Beethoven's home could get pretty messy. Hey, Anna, look at this room over here. I think we found another piano workshop. You're right, Leo. Check out this place. It looks a bit different from the other workshop we saw. What's that, Percy? He said Nanette and her brother took over the piano business after their father died. Eventually, Nanette and her brother decided to go their separate ways. So Nanette had her very own company. By that time, she had married a famous pianist named Johann Andreas Stryker. After that, her pianos were known as Stryker pianos, and she would build 50 to 65 handcrafted pianos a year. A Stryker piano, just like the one we saw in the museum. That was one of the pianos Nanette built in her workshop. Exactly, and building pianos was a lot harder than you think. It wasn't just about putting all the pieces together. Musicians like Beethoven and Mozart wanted their pianos to have a very specific sound. They would come to instrument builders like Nanette and tell them what they wanted. Nanette would have to customize the piano to make sure it had the exact sound they wanted. It took a lot of skill to do that. It's a good thing she was also a talented piano player. I'm sure that helped her build instruments. Definitely. Anna, do you hear that? I think I can hear people talking through this wall. I wonder what's going on on the other side. Hmm, maybe we can find an entrance somewhere. Over here. Anna, I think I found a way in. You found a door. Open it, Leo. Whoa, look at this place. Do you see those huge chandeliers hanging above us? I wonder if this is a ballroom. Yeah, and there's all these statues of people hanging up on the walls. Do you see that? Percy said those are statues of famous piano players. Ew, look. Everyone is taking their seats. 
Something must be about to happen. You're right. And now that everyone is sitting, I can finally see what's at the front of the room. They are pianos! Leo, this must be some kind of concert. All these people came to listen to music. And there's a lot of people in here. Like, hundreds of people. I think I just spotted Nanette. She's sitting over there. I see her too. This big room is right next to her workshop. Do you think it belongs to her? Percy said that Nanette had a huge concert hall near her piano showrooms. The hall seated 300 people, and young pianists would come and perform. So this room we're standing in must be her concert hall. Wow. And Leo, I just noticed something. There's more than one piano in here. You're right. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pianos. There are seven pianos in here. Just like the picture we found in the vault. So that picture we found must be a picture of Nanette's concert hall. Hold tight, Leo. I think we're about to travel. We're back in the vault. And here's the picture of the concert hall. It definitely looks like the room we were just in. You know, I wonder what happened to Nanette and her piano business. Percy said her son took over the family business after she and her husband died. And her son continued to build beautiful pianos that soon became famous around the world. Percy also said something else interesting. What was that? He said that for a long time, people assumed Nanette's husband was in charge of the piano factory. You see, in the early 1800s, it was rare for a woman to own her own business, and most piano builders were men. For years, Nanette Stryker was known as the wife of a piano builder, but she was the one who actually owned the piano factory. So it's taken a really long time for historians to realize Nanette was the one building the pianos. Yes, she learned how to build pianos from her father, played for Mozart, became one of Beethoven's close friends, and had her very own piano factory. Nanette Stryker had quite an interesting life. You know, maybe I should start taking piano lessons. Then maybe I'll be able to play as well as Nanette. Wait, Leo, I still haven't heard your song. I can play it for you if you still want to hear it. Yes, let's find you a piano. Oh, I think there's one at my school. Let's go! Welcome back. That sure was a great adventure. I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell all my friends about this amazing story. That's all for now. But if you want to learn more, be sure to check out my favorite magazine for kids, Honest History. There's a ton of stuff to learn in each issue, and I love the fun activities and questions. Bye. This episode was narrated by Nikki Bond and Joanne Shindley and written by Heidi Coburn. The production was read by Robot Pirate Media. To learn more about Honest History, visit us at honesthistory.co and follow for updates on social media. Thank you.